So tonight we're going to be doing the lens cap, and that is on page 6 20. So we're going to start a new part. It's going to be um, an inch part. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to save it. here and I'm gonna call it lens cap and I'm gonna save and then I'm gonna go to file properties and in description I'm gonna say lens cap comma flashlight and I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to save. Um, so notice here on the browser, I can have it say the file name and the description in the browser so that I can see exactly what's going on. All right. Move this a little bit. So now I'm on page 6 21. I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane. So, let me just say addresses here. Okay. So I'm on the front plane. I'm going to do new sketch. Okay. I'm going to do this a circle and place it. Okay. So I am on Page 6 21. I started my circle. I'm going to add a dimension. And it's going to be a diameter 4.9. And at this point, you can see that my circle is fully defined. And I want to extrude it. So I'm going to go to my features. I'm going to select extruded boss space. Um, the property was description, Matt. And um, basically, I went to file properties, I went to description, and I filled in lens cap, comma, flashlight. And that was so I, um, because I didn't have that description filled when I saved my, saved my part. So I've got my circle. It's fully defined. It's got the dimension. I'm on page 6-21, middle of page 6-21. I'm going to do an extrude, but on this extrude, I'm going to add a draft to it. So I'm going to enable the draft right here. And I want to extrude it back. So um, I think I do. Um, I want to, yeah, I want to click on this reverse direction to extrude it back, and you can see that in the middle of the page. And I want to extrude it a distance of 1.725, and I want the draft to be 5 degrees. And I want to draft it outward, and the draft is basically a taper. So if you look at it, you can see it's kind of like a, a drum where as it goes toward the back, it's getting a little bit bigger. So the distance is 1.725.
and the draft is five degrees and I've got it drafting outwards and I've got the arrow going in the minus C direction. Remember, you can always look at this bottom of the screen at the Cartesian coordinate system, see where the Z axis is and see how it lines up with this arrow. Notice I'm going in the minus Z direction and I'm gonna green check. And I've got my first feature for the lens cap, I'm gonna save that. Okay. Everybody good? Anybody needing help? Is there any way you could do that one more time? The whole thing? Um, just uh, where you did the outwards part. Oh, so when I did the extrude, see right here where it says draft outward? So there's a little check there. Everybody good? Anybody else needing help? What if we can't click draft outward if it's if it's grayed out? You need to make sure you've got the draft toggled on. If you don't have the draft toggled on, you're not going to be able to put a check on draft outward. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Everybody good? Anybody else needing help? Okay, I'm gonna green check. Okay, how much, so now- how much do you extrude the boss base again? Sorry? How much do you extrude it again? Uh, the thickness is 1.725 inches. And the draft is five degrees. Everybody good? I'm not seeing how you're keeping your origin on the smaller face. Um, basically, I, when I drew that circle, I made it coincident to the origin. Uh, okay. Mine's still, is it flipping? Like I've tried. Um, reversing it to different Yeah, ways. you need to make sure that it's going in the negative Z direction when you do the extrude. So you have to reverse the direction right here. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And it's staying on the larger face no matter what way I'm doing. Well, notice when I click this, how the arrow changes direction. Yeah. Okay. So I want this arrow pointing away from the Z. Okay. And the Y. Good. I think so. Everybody good? I'm gonna green check. All right, so my next sketch is going on the smaller face. Remember, we started on the front plane. So I'm highlighting the front plane in the browser so you can see that I started in the front plane and then um, I extruded out in this direction with that draft. 
and I want to place my sketch on this face where the front plane is. Okay, so that's what I'm trying. That's where I want to go. Okay, so I'm gonna um, click on this face and say new sketch. And I'm gonna draw another circle with the center coordinate uh, coincident with the origin. And I'm gonna give it a dimension of 3.875. Okay. And now I'm on page 6-22. Okay. And I'm going to do an extruded cut. So I'm going to go to the features ribbon and I'm selecting extruded cut right here. Okay, so everybody has extruded cut located. And I'm going to cut into my cylinder about 0.275. And once again, I want a draft of five degrees. But this time I'm going to uncheck draft outward. So 0.275 inches, draft of five degrees, and it's not being drafted outward, it's being drafted inward. Everybody good? Anybody lost? Anybody needing help? Yeah, yeah, so you want the circle to be on the smaller face, right? Correct. Okay. And then and then it's going to be three point, the dimension is going to be three point what? 3.875 is the diameter. Okay. Uh, all right. Everybody good? Okay, now I'm going to green check. So I'm going to call that indent. Okay. And I'm going to do a save. And I'm going to do a shell. And when I do my shell, I want to delete this face and I want to and I want to delete this back face here, okay? So I'm gonna have two, um, this face is gonna be removed and that face is gonna be removed. So I'm gonna select shell right here on the ribbon and my thickness for my shell is gonna be 0.15 and I'm gonna remove this face this small face right here, and then the back face, All right? And remember, if I click show preview, it'll show me a preview of how it's gonna look. And I'm gonna green check. And I'm gonna save it. Now, if I go to um, a right side view, and I'm gonna change it to wireframe because I just want you to see this. Um, I want you to notice that this side of the shell is drafting outward and this side of the shell is drafting inward. Do you see that? Because um, remember your whole thing was drafting out this way and then your indent was drafting in like that. So that's why it looks like that. And remember that O-ring that we made um, last week? That O-ring is going to sit right in here and right in here, okay, to create a seal so water doesn't come in and um, damage your, your flashlight. So we're going to have an O-ring sitting right in that little trough area. Right. So 
I'm going to switch it back to shaded with edges so you can see. There we go. Any questions about what I just showed you? I noticed I'm trying to get a circle for 3.875 in the smaller end of it. And then for some reason, it, I'm getting a different, um, a different measurement. The 3.875 inch. Let me try again. Yeah. Yeah, it keeps on coming out bigger. Well, you, maybe you have a, um, a constraint somewhere where it's, I don't know, got a tangent constraint or coincident constraint that you need to delete. I know it's hard for me to know. Is I want to select this outside edge and I'm going to be using that to make a revolved cut. Okay, so um, I'm going to select the right plane for a new sketch. So I'm going to select the right plane, right click, go new sketch. Okay. Then I'm going to select this edge and notice when I hover over this edge, it gives me this little cylinder with a line and that's telling me that I'm selecting a silhouette edge. That's what it's called. Okay. So I'm going to click on that edge and I'm going to say convert entities. Basically that copies that edge. And you get this little um, icon that means on edge silhouette what edge, okay? And I'm gonna take my mouse and I'm just gonna move that endpoint up just a little bit, okay? So there I have that little tiny edge. And I wanna create an aligned dimension or place an aligned dimension. So I use my smart dimension tool and notice I can adjust the dimension. So I can make it so that it's uh, horizontal or I can make it so that it's parallel to the line with the draft. So it's at that angle. I want it parallel to the line so it's angled. Okay. And I want that to be 0.25. Okay. And then I want to draw a center line from the origin. That's a horizontal center line. I'm doing that center line because that way I have a center line that I can revolve about. And remember, for a revolve, you need to have a, a center line or an axis or an edge to revolve about. Right, so now I'm on page 6-24. And I'll switch to um, shaded with edges. So I've got this little tiny line that's 0.25 and I've got a center line. And in my features, I'm gonna select revolved cut. Right, so I'm gonna select Revolve Cut. Now when I select Revolve Cut, I do not wanna close the sketch. So when you get this little dialog box, you're gonna say no. You do not wanna automatically close the sketch. If you select yes, it's gonna add lines that are gonna mess you up. So you wanna say no, All right? And notice it gives you a preview, all right? And I want to um, reverse the direction and change the thickness to 0.05. And notice when I reverse the direction, it started to cut inside my part. So you can kind of see that when I zoom in a little bit. See that? So if I put it out, it's outside the part. 
And if I reverse the direction, it's going into my part. Okay. So that's what I want. And I'm going to green check. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to call this um, back cut. So that's what she calls in the book. And I'm going to save. Everybody good. Anybody got a question? Zach's got a question. Uh, yeah. So every is it every time you do a, a thin uh, cut feature, does it um, does the profile end up being um, perpendicular to the line you've drawn? Um, the profile of the cut. I mean. Well, the profile isn't perpendicular. Well, you're doing a revolved cut, so. Right. So it's not really perpendicular. It's revolving around the center axis that you drew. Um, when you're doing a thin cut, you're having an open profile. It's right. one time when you don't have a closed sketch. Right, but the, we uh, defined it by um, drawing a line on um, a five degree taper. So I'm wondering, does the, the computer decide that it's going to cut um, you know, five uh, fifty thousandths of an inch um, into the part at a you know at a right angle. To it's gonna it's line. gonna do it at that five degree angle. Okay. Okay. I'm just I was just uh, yeah. It'll be it'll maintain that angle throughout. Okay. Okay, and, and Noble had a question, or Matt had a question. Sorry, Matt. Uh, I prefer not to go by that, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Um, on the revolve cut, I'm not getting an option of a preview, and it's not doing anything. Okay, so let me look at it. Um, so first, did you have, did you create the center line, the horizontal center line to revolve about? I did not. I missed that. Okay, so that could create an issue, because it doesn't know what you're, what you're revolving around. So make sure you add that horizontal center line and make sure you have that line selected in the field where it says axis of revolution. And we're on page 6-24, just so you know. Thank you. Okay, so, you, so you're good, Noble? I think so, thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, anybody else before I move forward? Okay, because now we're going to get into the if you thought we were like getting into challenge before, now it's going to be super challenging because this is where we put in the thread. Um, and I will tell you, most of the time, you don't bother modeling a thread um, because it really makes your part bigger than it needs to be. It's, it's very resource intensive. When you might want to model a thread is if you're doing a 3D part where you, where you want to print it. You might want to print a 3D part with a thread. Normally, I do not um, print uh, 3D parts with threads because the threads just like get shredded because of the nature of 3D printing. Um, if, I, if I need a threaded um, feature in a, in a 3D printed part, um, what I do is I create a, a hole and I ins do a threaded insert there. And that way I know that the thread's going to be stable. But for the purposes of learning how to model a thread, it's a good thing to know. So we're going to do it. Um, if you've ever looked at a threaded cap, like for a water bottle, you'll notice that the threads start a little bit away from the face. So if we're threaded on this size, 
okay? We don't want the thread starting right at this edge, right on this face, because what happens is then the thread gets stripped over time. You want the thread to be a little bit away from this face inside the part. And if you look at your water bottle or anything that's got a thread on it, you're gonna see that it doesn't start right on the edge, at least not if it's got a good design. So what we wanna do is um, we're gonna do an offset plane into the part. And we're on page 6-25 in the book. So I'm, I've got this small, tiny little face selected, the one that we just cut a little bit. And I'm gonna select on the features ribbon, I'm selecting the reference plane tool. Everybody see that? And I want that to go into my part 0 0.450. And I'm going to notice I'm going to rotate it around. And right now it's not going into my part. So I'm going to put a check right here where it says flip offset. And now you can see that that plane is going inside of my part. Everybody see that? Was everybody able to create an offset plane? Is there anybody who's having problems? I'm having problems. Okay. Yeah, I'm also still trying to get that extrude cut to work. Okay. Um, it just wants to set up on that face and not give me any chance to offset it. So you selected the plane tool? Yeah. And you selected distance right here, offset distance? Yeah, see, it doesn't give me that option. Do you have it face just, selected? Yeah, in the first reference, I select that short face. And it just gives me the option for tangent and flip offset. Okay. Because you selected the edge, not the face. No, see, that's what I thought I had selected the face. No, it would give you. Oh. Okay, let me try that now. See, it, if it would have, you're getting that because you did this. See that? So, no. No, see, I, I've got the face selected. Wait, do you have something in the second reference? No. Hmm. Wait, it's it's offsetting. What in the? <laughs> okay, give me a couple of minutes here. Oh. Okay, what's the offset again? 0.45. And you need to make sure that you're going into the part. Oh, got it. All right. Okay. Yep. And you're going to green you. check. Okay. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to call this plane thread plane because that's the plane I'm gonna use for my thread. Okay. All right. So this is what it looks like um, in the book on the bottom of page 6-25. I'm gonna orbit around here, I want to select this inside face here. So um, this inside circular edge that's on the wider side, not where the 
front plane is closer to the thread plane. Everybody see that? And I want to copy that onto the thread plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a sketch on the thread plane. I'm going to select the thread plane. I'm going to say new sketch. Okay. So I'm in sketch. My sketch is getting placed on the thread plane. I'm going to select this inside edge like I just showed you and I'm going to go convert entities. And notice that circle got copied over to the thread plane. Everybody see that? Okay. So now I'm on page 6-26 and I want to, for my thread, we're going to do a sweep. All right. So first we're going to insert the spiral the thread is going to do. They're going to go around. And then we're going to create the profile for the thread. Okay. And you all should be familiar with, with uh, threads and pitches of threads and all that because it's like a standard machinist handbook kind of stuff. Right. So I'm going to go insert curve helix spiral. Everybody see insert curve helix spiral. All right. And if you look at it, we got three choices. We've got pitch and revolution. Revolution is the number of turns. Okay. We've got height and revolution. Well, if you think about it, if you know the height, if you know the overall height, I'm going to like, I can do like a drawing. All right, so if I do like this, okay, that's my thread. My overall height is from here to here. My pitch is the distance between the turns or the revolutions, okay? That's the pitch, so that's P. This is H. Okay, if I know the pitch and the number of revolutions, can I figure out the height? Yeah. And, well, let me click there. And if I select height and revolution, can it figure out the pitch? Yeah, because the height divided by the number of revolutions is going to equal the pitch, the distance. If I select the height and pitch, can SolidWorks figure out how many turns there are? Yeah, because height divided by pitch equals the number of turns. All right, so we're going to put in pitch and revolution. So we're going to put in the distance between the threads and the number of turns. Okay. Our pitch is going to be 0.25. So this is going to be a quarter inch thread. And I'm going to check to reverse direction and notice it's going into my part. Okay. And right now it's only showing me one revolution. That's not enough. Right. I'm going to say 2.5. So two and a half turns. Notice my hat, two and a half turns. All right. Now notice that I've got an endpoint right here. Move this over. Move this over. And I've got an endpoint right here. You see where the endpoints for your for your curve are? All right. That has to do with the start angle. All right. I want my start angle to set it so that my endpoints are going to be coincident to one of my planes because 
I want to do a sweep. This curve is going to be my path, my thread path. And then my um, thread, the profile for my thread is going to be the profile for my sweep. So um, I'm going to show you. So if you look at your planes, I've got a right plane and I've got a top plane. See that? So if I change my start angle to zero degree, okay, look at where your endpoints are now. See, I have an endpoint here and an endpoint here. Can you locate your endpoints on your curve where they are? All right? So knowing where your endpoints are, do you want to use your top plane? for the profile of the sweep or the right plane for the profile of your sweep? Top plane. You would, right plane. Right plane? You, you would want to look at it from the side profile, right? No, you want the top plane because okay. notice how the top plane you're, when you place it, it's going to be right there perpendicular on that, on that endpoint. You want it to be coincident to that endpoint. Okay, so I'm going to clear the drawing. Okay, so notice how this, where this top plane is in relationship to the endpoints. It's coincident to those endpoints on the curve. Do you see that? Now, the other thing is right now I've got it at, um, no taper, okay? But we have a taper on the part. I'm gonna to switch to a right side view so you can kind of see it. So see how right now there's no taper on it, but we've got a taper on the part. So I wanna taper the ant helix and go five degrees. Now, do I wanna taper it outward? Yes or no? No. No. So if I uncheck it, notice how it adjusts. You see that? So now it's kind of following the silhouette of the inside of the part. Does that make sense? So we want quarter inch pitch. We want to reverse the direction so it's going into the part. We want two and a half revolutions because you usually want at least two threads, right? In order for you to have a good fit between part mating parts. Otherwise they could get loose and, and fall apart. And we want that five degree taper so that it follows the, the taper of the part. So I'm gonna green check, all right? And I'm going to turn off the visibility of that thread plane because I don't need to see it anymore. You've got that little blue line there. I'm going to switch to it. And you can see how it's tapering right with that part. Do you see that? And I'm going to rename that helix spiral thread path. I'm calling it thread path. Why? Because that's the path for my thread. Okay, any questions? Everybody good? Okay, so now I'm on the top plane. Notice when I highlight the top plane, do you see how it's sitting right on top of those, um, two endpoints on the curve. You see that? That's what you want. You want to be able to have your profile so that it's coincident with the, um, with the um, path, okay? So I'm going to do a sketch on the top plane, all right? And I'm going to put my sketch, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to put it so that it's um, over here on the outside. Now in the book, she makes it way more complicated than she needs it to be, okay? Basically, what she wants you to make is she wants you to make a trapezoid 
I don't know if you remember what a trapezoid looks like, but it's like that, okay? And this side and this side are equal, okay? All right, so that's basically the profile for your thread, okay? So I'm gonna draw my trapezoid. Okay, and I'm gonna make it bigger than I need it to be for, you know, cause I always like to start bigger than I need. All right, I can always go smaller, but then I have less space. So I've got this trapezoidal shape, yeah? And then I'm gonna draw a center line from the midpoint of the large line to the midpoint of the smaller line. And I'm gonna set that to be horizontal. And I want this line and this line to be equal. Whoops. Control C. Um, I want this line and this line to be equal. Okay. And I want this vertical line and the center line to be equal. Okay. So these two lines are equal and this line is equal to that line, okay? And then I'm gonna add some dimensions. And in the book she makes it really confusing because first she makes it really big and then she has you change it. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to say this and is going to be 0.125. And this end is going to be 0.25, okay? I think that's still going to be too big. I'm going to say this is going to be 0 0.0625, and I'm going to make this 0.125. I just think she makes it way too big in the book. Okay, so I've got my trapezoid and I've got my dimensions on there. And what I want is I want this end point here to be coincident to the end of the thread path. All right, you're going to want to watch me because um, we're using the pierce. And I know some people find the pierce to be very tricky. So I'm going to say add relation. And I'm going to select, I'm not going to select the end point of the thread path. I'm going to select near the end point of the thread path. So I'm just selecting that curve. Okay. And notice it says edge right there. Okay. And then I'm going to select the end point of that center line that's at the midpoint of the longer line. And then I'm gonna say pierce, okay? And see how it just jumped right where I wanted it to go. See that? So it just moved it to the correct position. All right, I'm gonna wait a minute, let you guys catch up. Ask me any questions you need to ask me. Anybody need to see that again?
Uh, so I had a quick question. Um, so when I go to display, um, uh, delete relate. Oh, add relation. That was my mistake. Okay, just figured it out. Okay. At least, why did you select uh, near the endpoint of the line rather than the endpoint of it? If you select the endpoint, then you're not going to get the pierce. Oh, okay, I see. Thank you. And I want it to jump right into the correct position. Okay, if everybody's good, I'm gonna, we're ready for our sweep. Now remember, for a sweep to work, you need to be out of all your sketches. So I'm gonna exit the sketch, and I'm gonna rename this sketch Thread Profile. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm still uh, trying to solve an issue where okay. it doesn't jump inside. Uh, the, only the end with the midpoint that I select kind of swivels and is pointing outside the sketch, like the sketches of moving as a group, which means I'm probably I'm missing a few relations. Probably. Mm -hmm. So make sure you've got a midpoint relationship between the endpoint of the center line and the two vertical lines. Mm -hmm. And make sure uh, you've got those two equal relationships. Mm -hmm. It looks like I do have all those things, um, but um, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll just try and uh, make it work. You could always um, just move it closer and then it is less likely to do weird convoluted things to you. Okay. So at this point, we've got our thread path. We've got our thread profile. So we can do this swept boss base. And keep in mind, I am going to post this, this, this video is already online on YouTube. And then I'm going to post this one online on, on YouTube as well. So you'll have two videos to watch. So I'm going to click on swept boss base. It's automatically select the thread profile. I already put the thread profile in there. And then for the thread path, I'm just gonna select that helical sweep and notice it shows you the sweep and I'm gonna green check. And I'm gonna save and I'm gonna call it thread. Okay. All right, so at this point, we are done with the lens cap. Woohoo! All right, and so in the book, she's done. She's, she's, you know, she's, she's, she moves on and gives you no further assistance. But um, you need to create a sub assembly with the lens cap and the lens with shield and light bulb. Um, so let me see if I can find the lens and shield with light bulb. Um, yep. um, let's see if I can find one. Okay. All right, there. So here's my lens and um, bulb. Let me see if I can find the lens.
everything else. Okay. And there's the bulb. Okay. So there's the lens and the bulb. I need to fix the mates. Let's see. So. Um, for the concentric mate, I'm going there. All right. And the coincident mate, you may recall I needed to do like a little section view. Okay. And I'll select that face. And I'm good. And I'm good. So there I've got my lens and bulb assembly. Okay, and I also need my O-ring. Okay, all right, cool. All right, so I'm gonna save that. So now I'm gonna go back to my lens cap. And I'm going to say I need to create an assembly for all of these parts. So I'm going to say new assembly. Okay. And I'm going to put in my lens cap. And I'm going to put in my lens and bulb subassembly. And I'm going to put in my O-ring. Okay. And I'm going to save this. And I'm going to save it in my SolidWorks 2020. And I'm going to call this lens cap. Oops. I want it to be all caps. Lens cap and lens, okay. So now, how am I gonna assemble all of this stuff? I wanna, I wanna walk you through this because um, some students find this really, really challenging. Now, I don't necessarily want you to do, do this with me, but I do want you to watch it so that you don't struggle so much when it comes time for you to do it. And you are gonna need to do an assembly drawing for the lens cap and lens subassembly, okay? This entire subassembly goes inside of the flashlight, okay? So first is we can do a concentric mate between those two parts. Okay, see that? Okay. And this guy sits right there, right on top of there. Okay. And I'm going to, um, let's see. Okay. So notice that my lens cap is not mated to the, it's not aligned well with everything. So with the assembly, see how my uh, top plane here is not aligned to the top plane there, see that? So right there, I'm gonna have problems. So I'm gonna float my lens cap and I'm gonna do a mate between the origin of my lens cap and the origin of my subassembly, because then I know that everything's going to line up. Okay. All right. Now, uh, right. Okay. Now, when I section this, I want you to see what it looks like. See how? See how this? Um, see how this lens is sitting right here, and the O-ring is going to sit right in this little. It, this little uh, gap area to seal 
the lens so that the bulb doesn't rust out and all sorts of other bad things. Okay, but this O-ring needs to be the correct size. And notice I have, I'll go back over to the O-ring. Notice for the O-ring, I have a configuration that I created called flashlight. I had to create a new size for the O-ring to get it to fit into that lens cap correctly, all right? So you are going to have to create a new configuration for the O-ring. You're gonna have to go and back and add that size or it's not gonna fit correctly. Okay, so how do you figure out what size you want? All right, so I'm gonna come back to my lens and not this one, I'm gonna close that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my big assembly, the lens cap and lens assembly. Okay, and go back to the right view and I'm gonna go back to a wireframe so you can see, all right, so, <clears throat> So you can see that this O-ring here, let me get in and draw a little bit. Okay, so this O-ring is going to be in this spot. Whoops, and, oops. Well, that's not very cool. All right, let me, okay, so I, it needs to go in this spot and this spot, or this spot. So the path diameter is the distance from here to here, and this profile diameter is this distance right here. See that? So to figure that out, what I can do is I can use my measure tool. Okay? I'm gonna use my measure tool. And and go there and go there. I'm gonna go there. Okay, here's my measure tool. Okay, I'm gonna say my inside diameter has to be, or my small profile has to be six millimeters. Do you see that? And my overall is gonna be the distance between this here and here. Okay. Plus, okay, here's you gotta do a little um, geometry. So the distance from here to here is 104.85. But if I make my path diameter 104.85, is that gonna be correct? Any ideas? No, it won't be. Why not? Because you need a uh, circumference measurement. Yeah, you, need, than... you need to include part of that, that, that diameter. So what you're going to do is you're going to add 104 plus 6 millimeters, and then you'll have the correct dimension, okay, for the path diameter. Because that'll place it right here in the middle, right? So... That's the answer there. So how do I assemble this O-ring into this assembly? That's the next thing. And this is very challenging for students because if I use the origin, it's not gonna place it correctly. But what I can do is I can use these planes. So I have the top plane here and the top plane here, and I can mate those together. See that? And then I can say, 
the right plane and the right plane. And you see that? So see now the O-ring is centered right over everything. Do you see that? So if you go top plane to top plane, right plane to right plane, you're in good shape. Okay, but now I've got to seat this O-ring in here. So how do I do that? Well, I've got, a, I've got this front plane, and that front plane is right in the middle of my O-ring. So I can use half of the radius of the O-ring and do a distance mate. So I'm going to say from the front of the O-ring, okay, and I want to do another section view. I'm going to section, yeah, okay. So I'm going to do a mate from the front of the O-ring, okay, to this bottom face here. And notice I had to section it out to put things together, okay. And I'm going to do a distance of three millimeters. Look at that. See how it lands it? right where I wanted it to be, okay? Now, I'm sure Jim would say, wait a minute, it's, uh, it's interfering in there, right? But remember, this, this O-ring is squishy, and you want it to interfere so that it forms a good seal, right? So you want squish, you want some interference, and it's gonna mush, but look how nice it's placed. Look at how, I'm gonna do a normal view. So you can see that this is sitting nicely, the bulb is sitting nicely, the O-ring is sitting nicely, everything's fitting together very lovely, okay? And that's what I wanna see in your assembly drawing, okay, for the assembled view. Okay, obviously the exploded view, they're all going to get exploded out. Okay. Any questions about what I just showed you?